Yeah. At present moment, we are at the gun hill. The gun hill is a place where you see the Kojo was staying when he fought in against the British. This was really the lookout point for them. As far as you can see, it is within the community of Flagstaff, Marrow Town, Sury Town. You could see as far as Point, Kensington. Yeah. Good afternoon. My name is Robert Pearson, and I'm here to give a little welcome. Welcome to an opportunity to get to know more about our own la homeland and the beautiful and unusual gift of this unique era. Our main objective is to help you to paint a picture of what this era tells us about the past and some of the amazing and the nature and culture feature of this landscape. The small farming community of Flagstaff is situated in West Central Jamaica in the parish of St. James. At first glance, looks no different than any other rural Jamaica village. Flagstaff is one of the most remote communities on the island, located at the end of a winding mountain road. The people here have a well-defined sense of identity, an identity shaped by the history of this place and the people who live here. The Africans that had left the plantation to seek their own freedom in the hills of Jamaica. <coughs> they were described as, mo as maroons. This is Petty River, as we said. This was the, 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 the river that the maroon them used for their domestic purpose from the longest time. This is where a group of over 400 enslaved Africans and their leader, Kojo, settled at a spring named Petty River Bottom in 1690. They seek, seek refuge here because the hills provide a safe haven for them, and anyone in pursuit of them would have to put up with pests and also the illy terrain of the cockpit. They have numerous battles between the British, where the British were sued for peace, and this is where the peace treaty was signed in 1739. Gotri and Kojo cut their hand and threw in the calabash. At Pakitik. But the treaty, what them signed, is a compound. Peace treaty. Peace treaty. Here we are at Guthrie Defile. This is the defile where Captain Guthrie, Colonial Captain Guthrie, met with Kojo for the very first time. This is where they, 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 they negotiate the peace treaty before they sign it at Petri River Bottom, right here at Guthrie Defile. If you come down a little further, you can see how it is so narrow. After the treaty was signed, the Maroon were given 1,500 acres of land to live as free people. Old Town is where the Maroon settled after the treaty sign. This is where the Maroon population started to increase, which um, stretches across Newtown and Fury Town, which is known as Shaw Castle today. They lived for 60 years before the British infringed on their rights. Kojo in those times, they had the old town and because of the moving in of the British, they had to establish a new town. So both new town and old town is right there in that um, old Chilani town, old Kojo town, Maroon town, and what is commonly called Flagstaff today. Yeah, but, but around here would name Fury town. Fury town yeah, yeah, by the Maroon. Around here would call them um, Fury town. But we don't use that name anymore. It's Shark Castle now. Shark Castle now have a rich source of history. You know? Because we have the old plantation there, we have a whole well down the gully there. 
where, where, they, where they used to feed water to the great house, okay. right? We are, we are at Sharkas now, otherwise called Original Fury Town. This, this is the way, this is the way to the, the old town. In um, Chilani town, where they call Flagstaff now. As you know, around here, by Fury Town is where the second Maroon Road War started from in 1795. The Second Maroon War was instigated by the flogging of a Maroon by other slaves. Also the complaint they made about how the land was too small and infertile. They set a date to meet with the governor in Montego Bay, but 30 of the least warlike Maroons surrendered and were carried away by guards. When the other remaining Maroons heard about what happened, they set fire on their town. This battle took place at Dragoon Hall where the most elite part of the British military was defeated. You know that the war did fight at Jagoon Wall and um, the Maroon did overcome the British, the soldiers and, and, and it's like um, when the war finished them, them, them make <coughs> take a trail from Jagoon Wall go pack it thick and go through the woods and end up at a place they call um, Kampong Town, a Kampong Town. And then so them take up resident and build them one maroon town there. Come round to Dragon Wall. There they camp on and they take the leaf and make clothes. So when they, the soldier them come, they thought it is bush so they don't trouble it. So when they fire fire because you have to fire to clear the way. She take a bottom and catch the bullet. And then when she catch the bullet, you know, them kill off the, the, the black one, them come and kill off the white man. Them. Um, in, with the time when they, they, they kill the, the 99 out of the 100 down by Dragon Hall, they, they, they use bush to make camouflage, like clothes and stand up like they are a stump of bush. And so till then come up and everybody they screech if you pass this bush. Then these boys grab them and behead all some of them, you know. But 99 went down and they saved back one and sent him back with some tidings. Despite the victory the Maroon had in Dragoon Hall, the British gained victory in the hand because they were able to capture Gun Hill. This used to be the Maroon lookout point where they look to see the neighboring communities and to see whenever there's any in intruders coming in from nearby communities. Also, we can stay here and see the port in Falmouth. After the Second Maroon War, the British come and take over this hill, where they place a great gun and use it to bomb the Maroon further down from, to their, water, from their water source in Petty River Bottom. When I was a girl, I used to go up there, see the gun, I don't know if it's up there now, but you see the big, great gun there. Mm. Yeah, man. They were uh, tricked, uh, told they were going to sign a peace treaty, Excuse me? but they were shackled and sent to uh, almost there. Nova Scotia. After the Second Maroon War, the Maroons were forcibly deported to Halifax in Nova Scotia. The ministers brought them to church one Sunday and told them that any one of the men who have two or three wives and children they should put one family aside or two family aside and deal with one side. The Maroons rebel, the Chilani Maroons rebel against this. And as a result, they were further deported back to Sierra Leone. Then they set sail to Sierra Leone, where they stay and become affluent members of the country. One of their leaders, Colonel Montague, was actually made uh, mayor of um, Freetown in uh, Sierra Leone. However, some returned to Jamaica.
That is why you do not have many people living in Shirley Town today because the persons were taken away from there and they were shipped out. And many people will remain, would have either gone to a compound or some other uh, settlement within the cockpit region. Some of their generation came back here in 1830, in 1841, to work as indentured labor. Okay, this is why we have some of the Shaws and Nugents, even the Camerons. Um, after the, the thing, the, the, all the history taken into a compound. So, um, it's only a man like this, like blood now. Who, 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 and, and also who stay on the battlefield. Lots of us stay on the battlefield. Still like my grandmother and, and us. After the deportation of the Maroons, the British erect barracks over Trelawney Town. Today, we have several historical sites, which includes the cemetery, well, tank, hospital, and garrison park. This is a mixed burial site for the Maroon and British. There is 26 visible grave, and the site is marked by a calabash tree. Right here, this is a grave of Charles Ross. He was a surgeon. So this is the, the remnants of the old hospital. And this wall was built between 1838 and 1839. This is the first women pool and tank that was built in Jamaica by the British. They used the water to cure their malaria patients due to the high mineral contents that is found in it. Today, people use the water for drinking and domestic use. So the British are here. This is the British military ground and they built their barracks on top of this hill here. And the barracks is where they store their guns and ammunition. Today, we have a visible well that have the shape of a British hat. People in the community use the water for domestic purpose and for use. Flagstaff today is a vibrant community as you could see the youths having a good game of football. We have several small businesses such as a carpenter shop. He provides us with furniture. Just a small business as you can see. There's a bar and other little stuff. Here we have a banana field. Also, it have um, planting. Here in Flagstaff, we have many small farms. This is one of them. On this farm, you could see bananas, dasheen, yam, and plantain. At our visitor center, we have some plaques, which give you a brief history about the history of Flagstaff. Also, it tells you about the cockpit. Welcome to the Flagstaff Cockpit Country gift shop. Here we have some and the work of our talented people that reside in this area. Here we have the jump that I'm beating. We have some animals here made out of woods, some hot works. Also some cups. The members of Flagstaff actively involved in the traditional songs and dance that was created by our four parents.
This is a grave digging of one of our beloved member of Flagstaff. As you can see, members singing, also preparing a meal for the odd working grave diggers. <laughs> By the rivers of Babylon, where I sat down. The people of Flagstaff maintain their roots by going to drip to fetch their drinking water. Yeah man, I'm fully up of water like this. Yeah, and then we make a drink. Ah, uh, boy, it's refreshing. This water tastes like it's coming out of the fridge. What helped me a lot is that which I learned from my grandmother. Every Friday evening after we come from school, she would send us to the field, into the field, to pick bush and we'd have to pick 21 different bush then for that seven day she would give us 21 bush three each morning boiled together i'm just healthy i sleep all right i wake up and i worked all right and i don't sick thank god for the herbs thank god for what my maroon grandmother taught me over the years. Members of Flagstaff met on a regular basis with the Cockpit Country Local Forestry Management Committee to discuss matters regards to environmental and cultural resources. In 2011, the members in Flagstaff is excited about the project to send two members to Syria alone to reunite with our relative that we have no connection for for over two centuries. These are their messages to you in Syria alone. What I would like to say is when, when our representative go over there, We'd like them to gather all the information they could get and, and bring it back to us so we can collaborate and, you know, share information. I sent the Maroon in Africa where you are going to. Greetings from your Maroon sisters and brothers and people who are here in Flagstaff. Greetings. Greetings, love you all. So, from us, cockpit we say, cockpit all the way, and we are going to welcome all of those persons back there in Sri Lankan to feel free to visit us here, so that we can give them some of the culture. In a true maroon parlance, we would say that country seed can last. Meaning to say, the fact that you are a true young kunkuno pikibo. No matter where you go in the world, and no matter the time that would have elapsed, once you meet, once you get together, you will recognize each other, and you will know that you are true young kunkuno pikibo. And what you say, all maroon must unite, and if all maroon come under one banner fly one flag of one anthem, then that's the way we maroon gonna be strong.